Hello everyone, welcome to another Coffee and Contemplation brought to you by Spotlight Recovery. It is April 9th, we've got a just for today, today, <laughs> talking about acting out and just the behavioral side of addiction after we've quit using. So I thought it's got a couple of good points in it, so let's uh, pop it up on the screen here and let's get into it. April 9th, acting out. We learn to experience feelings and realize they can do us no harm unless we act on them. Many of us came to Narcotics Anonymous with something less than an overwhelming desire to stop using. Sure, the drugs were causing us problems, and we wanted to be rid of the problems, but we didn't want to stop getting high. Eventually, though, we saw that we couldn't have one without the other. Even though we really wanted to get loaded, we didn't use. We weren't willing to pay the price anymore. The longer we stayed clean and worked the program, the more freedom we experienced. Sooner or later, the compulsion to use was lifted from us completely, and we stayed clean because we wanted to live clean. <clears throat> the same principles apply to other negative impulses that may plague us. We may feel like doing something destructive just because we want to. We've done it before, and sometimes we think we've gotten away with it, but sometimes we haven't. If we're not willing to pay the price for acting on such feelings, we don't have to act on them. It may be hard, maybe even as hard as it was to stay clean in the beginning, but others have felt the same way and have found the freedom not to act on their negative impulses. By sharing about it and seeking the help of other recovering people and a power greater than ourselves, we can find the direction, the support, and the strength we need to abstain from any destructive compulsion. Just for today, it's okay to feel my feelings. With the help of my sponsor, my NA friends, and my higher power, I am free not to act out on my negative feelings. To act out my negative feelings. Okay, so I like, I just like that they talk, this is focused more on the behavioral side of addiction. You know, it's like, okay, yes, we're drug addicts. Uh, quitting drugs was like, was the biggest challenge and biggest priority for us coming into recovery. Like that was the main reason. But even now that we've stopped using and we don't want to use, we still have this whole behavioral emotional side that needs tending to and something we're always going to be working on so that's something that really that i really like to read and what pops out for me in this um it kind of reminds me of um breaking down the word alcoholism and so or you may have heard people say um just kind of like separating the difference between uh being an alcoholic and alcoholism so it's like when I'm sober or in recovery, I have removed the alcohol, but I still have the isms. <laughs> so to, to me, that means like I still have all the behaviors and the thinking behind it. And it's when we kind of realize it's like I don't need drugs to act like a drug addict. <laughs> like the drugs are actually that's the coping tool. That's the like reward or the goal is getting loaded. But all the behavior and everything else that I do to acquire that, to work towards and achieve this goal, that's already there. That's there in the first place. I don't need drugs to fuel that stuff. And even as how it talks about in the first paragraph of this just for today, um, I don't, uh, don't want to get high anymore because I'm not willing to pay the price. Yet I'm still finding that I am fighting all of these destructive impulses, these old behaviors that are bad for me, um, uh, these big emotional responses. And then if I'm having a feeling, having that internal debate of, well, do I have any control over this feeling or not? Like, I really like that. That stands out to me a lot. Um, just because we have this disease that in a way is, for lack of a better word right now, is incurable. Hopefully one day this video becomes outdated and we figured something else out and discovered some more, but that's for the future. For now, April 9th, 2024, the only cure for this is doing this daily reprieve, working a program, um, and just not getting high just for today. That's the best we've got right now. So even though I am not getting high, I still have this disease that is a part of my brain that will always be there, that will always try to trick me and convince me of doing these things that I don't need to do. Um, and so that's what it's talking about here more, and I really like that. And um, it's funny how it seems like a big realization, almost, 
for a lot of us in recovery. I know it was for me. Uh, just when we're not using anymore, so then we're experiencing and feeling our feelings more and usually like a lot more because we're not dumbing them down with drugs anymore. Uh, it's having this big feeling and then learning and realizing that I don't have to act on it. <laughs> like, you know, or just because I have this impulsive thought, I don't have to act on that. You know, it's really funny. Just that lesson of like learning to pause and think and decide, choose our behavior, choose our emotion, and then eventually be choosing and we're developing this thought process by going through all of that. You know, it's it's really funny how that was just very news flashy for me, and it is for a lot of people in recovery that I've worked with too. I've seen this a lot. Just because um, in addiction, we run on autopilot. Once you get to that space of like full-blown addiction, it's autopilot. You're a slave to the disease. It is calling the shots, dictating where you go, what you do, who you see, so on and so forth. And then we're in that for years. And then, of course, the longer the addiction is, the longer we are used to just being in that autopilot. And then the longer our brain has like carved out these neural pathways in our gray matter. So that deepens. So then we are just more and more used to this autopilot. The autopilot gets even stronger. So then you do that for years. Then in theory, the more it takes then to come back from that essentially, and then be able to be making those choices and decisions and everything. So, and then I like it. It talks about how on the last paragraph there on how like it is hard. Like that is hard for us to do is fighting that old impulse to act on it because um, we're just, you know, for a multi for a bunch of reasons, like we're we're still not used to feeling our emotions, let alone feeling them now to the level that we are because we're not using and we're still looking for some other form of coping mechanism, some other way to just get rid of the feeling, deal with it, change it, whatever it is, you know, and then there's that other part of just that weird general thing we have where we just love chaos and we are more used to chaos and thrive in that. And when things are starting to calm down and even out and find some more peace, that thing in the back of our mind is still just like, okay, I am starting to get more uncomfortable with all of this. This is a little too peaceful. This is a little too relaxing. I just need to stir some shit up right now. Like that, uh, <laughs> that's this other bizarre, just kind of common thing that we have and that we do. Again, another one of those isms that's a part of the disease that we do not have to be using in order to be acting on. Um, so there's that funny space, but I just, I, I just like that they talk about it and just acknowledge that it is, it is hard. We all go through it. It's a common thing with addiction and you still don't have to act on it. This is now a choice. You're starting to be able to make more that you're living in recovery. You're not in, you're not using anymore. Um, and so I like that it just talks about it and gives you just some of those points and suggestions too. You know me, I'm all about the, what do we do about this? Give me the suggestion, give me the action, let's start working on something here. And it talks about that by sharing about it, seeking the help of other recovering people and a power greater than ourselves. We can find the direction, the support, and the strength we need to abstain from any destructive compulsion. And I think that's just, again, with that typical um, approach with recovery of just being like, if you could have gotten yourself better, you would have. You would have been able to think your way out of it and just choose to make better decisions and behaviors and put drugs down and so on and so forth. You couldn't. And again, this isn't a knock on you. That's how the disease works. Like it's if when you're full blown addiction, nobody can overcome this stuff by themselves. It's not about you. It's about the disease, right? So therefore, reach out to others, share, talk about this stuff, connect with other people in recovery. Get guidance from some people you really look up to and respect in recovery and, and suggestions from a support system, things like that. Those are all what will help you through this and just help you through recovery. So not only with just drug use now, but also 
on the emotional side, on the behavioral side, acting impulsively. You know, it's it's giving us support with all of those things too. You know, it's just, it's that like holistic approach, if you will. And so that's something that I really like about this as well. Um, and then just summarizing it all with that just for today line, it's okay to feel my feelings. With the help of my sponsor, my NA friends, and my higher power, I am free not to act out my negative feelings. And I think a key word in there is free. I am free not to act out on these things. And freedom, having that freedom of choice, freedom from want and compulsion. I mean, oh, oh, I'm feeling that so much just saying it. Like that's one of the biggest, that's one of the biggest reasons as to why we do this. I know it sure is for me. That was arguably the biggest reason. So I really like that they mentioned that and just, summarize everything down to that point so so there we go there is uh oh there's the wrong button there we are so there we are for april 9th just for today i hope that stood out for you please throw down in the comments what stands out for you what did you like about that just for today would love to hear your shares and thoughts uh check out the description for other ways that spotlight recovery can support you we've got a bunch of other recovery coaching videos in there a podcast blog all these other free resources for you uh, i also do recovery coaching with folks so if you like what you're hearing but just am wanting some more support and guidance around all this i'd be happy to help please reach out uh, contact info is in the description too and we'll see if there's a way that i can support you in your recovery and last is if you want to support spotlight recovery doing all the youtube things like share and subscribing if you're enjoying this content getting yourself some branded merch we've got a great merch store down there these clothes are really comfortable um and uh, you can also donate to the channel and become a member of it. Uh, we'd really appreciate it. And uh, all these things will just help us grow more so we can carry the message more. Okay, so thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed today's reflection. Uh, wishing you a blessed 24 and uh, a one with good positive choice on behavior and not acting out. And we'll see you again tomorrow.